All right, so we built a quiz in, in the earlier screencast, and the quiz lets us click next to walk through the questions of our quiz. We're not doing any answering yet. We're just letting the user see a bunch of questions, and this could be used for any kind of inf informational app, just a way to navigate through um, the information you want people to see. Okay, And what we did was we introduced an index, which is kind of this variable. It's a memory cell. We started out as one and then every time they click next we change it to one more. It's self plus one. Okay? And then we go grab the indexed question and stick it in this label. Okay, I want to show you a debugging tool that App Inventor has. It's really nice. It can kind of help you understand what's going on internally because the, the problem with variables is in our code we see kind of their initial value but we don't as the app runs we don't really see how they're changing you know we know we're changing index but we don't we don't really see it the user of course is not going to see it um, but as a programmer it's nice as you're running things to see what's going on so I'm going to click on this variable and actually on my Mac at least control click and notice there's a few things I can do add comment I'm going to click on watch okay and this is a very nice tool it lets us see the current value of the variable. So remember, this is our initial value. When the app starts, it'll be 1. But this is going to show us as we test, as we run our app, it's going to show us what index is. Okay, so if I come over to the emulator, if I click next, we know this second question is going to appear, but what you're also going to see is that number is going to change to 2. Okay, so we're getting kind of a, a runtime view of this hidden variable. You know, the user doesn't see it, but as a programmer, we can see it. It can help us debug our program. Click next again, it changes the three third question. And remember, our big problem is if we click next again, index becomes four, and we try to grab the fourth item. Okay. So we're going to have to fix that, and, and let's, let's think about fixing that right, right now. Um, the simplest thing to do is just add a if statement. Okay, and you know, kind of what we want to do is ask a question here. So we're going to change the index to one more, and we want to see if index is too big. Okay, and the first thing we can do is just kind of grab a reference to index and then go to uh, math and grab a greater than sign okay and you can kind of ask is the index greater than you know we got three questions here so let's grab a three is our index greater than three okay if it's greater than three we don't wanna we don't wanna you know grab that next item okay really only if it's less than or equal to three. So one thing we can do is switch that. So if index, whoops, sorry. Let's grab the less than or equal. If index is one, two, or three, let's go ahead and grab our next question. Okay, we haven't really thought about what we want to do is if they get to the third question and go, but at least here I think we should be able to walk through and not get a runtime bug, right? So we don't want the app to end. Um, I believe what's going to happen here is when index gets to four, it's just not going to change. It's going to leave the third question in there. Okay. So it's not exactly what we want, but let's at least test this out to see see if it's okay. So the emulator is coming up. I'm going to click over here on it, and uh, so first question appears. I click next. Click next again. There's the third and final question. If I click next again, I think my index will become four, but I won't try to grab the the empty fourth slot. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Okay, in the next uh, screencast, I'll show you, you know, how to how to actually change the behavior so we kind of spin around and let the user go go around back to the first question in case they wanted to re re answer.